Hello everyone and thank you for joining me for lesson 188. I sure hope you're getting as much out of these lessons as I am. As many times as I've done them, every time it's a new ball game. This one entitled, The Peace of God, The Peace of Love is Shining in Me Now. This was one of co-scribe Bill Thetford's favorite lessons. He was finally persuaded to record 10 of his favorites, and this was one of them. And so it begins. Why wait for heaven? Why wait for joining? Why wait for love? Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. The light is in them now. Enlightenment is only a recognition and not a change in any of us at all. Light is not of this world, yet you who bear this light in you are alien here as well. The light came with you from your native home and stayed with you because it's your own. How could you come someplace and not bring yourself along with you? It's the only thing you bring with you from Him who is your source. It shines in you because it lights your home and leads you back to where it came from and where you are at home. Now, this light can't be lost. So why wait to find it in the future or believe it's been lost already or was never there? It can so easily be looked upon that arguments which attempt to prove it is not there, become ridiculous. Who can deny the presence of what he beholds in himself? It's not difficult to look within, because there all vision starts. There is no sight, be it of dreams, our hallucination, or from a truer source, that is not but the shadow of that seen through inward vision. Inwardly. There's where perception starts, and there it ends. It has no source but this. The inner and the outer are always identical. The peace of God is shining in you now, and from your heart extends around the world. It pauses to caress each living thing and leaves a blessing with it that remains forever and forever. What it gives must be eternal. It's just an all-out-of-time situation. It removes all thoughts of the ephemeral and the valueless. Ephemeral means having to do with time. It brings renewal to all tired hearts and lights all vision as it passes by. All of its gifts are given everyone, and everyone unites in giving thanks to you who give and you who have received. The whole giving and receiving thing, you see, is emphasized over and over again because getting that right and understanding it is so central. The shining in your mind reminds the world of what it's forgotten, and the world restores the memory to you as well. In other words, you see out there what you're experiencing inwardly from you. Salvation radiates with gifts beyond all measure, given and returned. To you, the giver of the gift, does God himself give thanks. And in his blessing, does the light in you shine brighter, adding to the gifts you have to offer to the world. The peace of God can never be contained. Who recognizes it within himself must give it. There's, there's no option but to give it. It just flows out of us. And the means for giving it are in his understanding. He forgives because he recognized the truth in him. Finally, the peace of God is shining in you now and in all living things. In quietness is it acknowledged universally. For what your inward vision looks upon is your perception of the universe. So sit quietly and close your eyes. The light within you is sufficient. Now remember, we're not talking about light bulb light. We're talking about understanding and beyond. It alone has power to give the gift of sight 
to you. Exclude the outer world and let your thoughts fly to the peace within. They know the way. For honest thoughts, untainted by the dream of worldly things outside yourself, become the holy messengers of love itself. These thoughts you think with him, they recognize their home, and they point surely to their source, where God the Father and the Son are one. God's peace is shining on them, but they must remain with you as well, for they were born within your mind as yours were born in God. These are the thoughts it's referring to. They lead you back to peace from where they came just to remind you how you must return. They heed your father's voice when you refuse to listen, and they urge you gently to accept his word for what you are instead of fantasies and shadows and ego misperceptions. They remind you that you are the co-creator of all things that live, for as the peace of God is shining in you, it must shine on them. So we practice coming nearer to the light in us today. We take our wandering thoughts and gently bring them back to where they fall in line with all the thoughts we share with God. We're not going to let them stray. We let the light within our minds direct them to come home. We have betrayed them, ordering that they depart from us. But now we call them back and wash them clean of strange desires and disordered wishes. We restore to them the holiness of their inheritance. These wandering thoughts, of course, that it refers to are our ego thoughts, our what would it be like to be separate thoughts. And then once that idea got a foothold, so to speak, then all of our sense of separate self is built upon those ideas. So those are the ones we want to say, oh, I need to look at these again. That's what it's referring to. Thus are our minds restored with them. And we acknowledge that the peace of God still shines in us and from us to all living things that share our life. We will forgive them, absolving all the world from what we thought it did to us. For it is we who make the world as we would have it. So now we choose that it be innocent, devoid of sin and open to salvation, open to finding our way back to what's true. And we lay our saving blessing on it as we say, the peace of God is shining in me now. Let all things shine upon me in that same peace and let me bless them with the light in me. An exquisite lesson. You can see why Bill, who was such an amazing, sensitive man, would choose this as one of his very, very favorites. I hope it becomes one of yours as well, and I hope you have a wonderful day shining that light. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Goodbye.